The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Hello and welcome to Tactics Time. I am Nick Risco, uh, one of the instructors here at the St. Louis Chess Club, and I'm filling in for Caleb Denby tonight as he is on vacation. He will be returning soon for Tactics Time and Openings Explained. We just finished up Openings Explained on YouTube, uh, so go check that out. Um, but here we're going to focus on tactics, and we're going to talk about an uh, interesting topic. We're going to talk about how computers suck at chess. Um, tonight we have a collection of puzzles that uh, even the strongest computers cannot evaluate correctly. Uh, we're going to go through those and also talk about why computers can't solve them. First, just to warm everybody up, we're actually going to start with just a mate in one puzzle which a computer can solve uh, and then move on from there. Um, this may be probably one of the most ridiculous puzzles we have ever had here on Tactics Time. But uh, we'll pull that up for you guys. Um, here, uh, I'm not going to tell you guys which side to move, um, but which move and which side to move is going to be mate in one. We're going to leave it up until we have an answer in the chat. Hmm. Looks like I'm having issues connecting to the chat. Oops, I broke it. Um, if it is white to move, it's possible it's mate in two. Um, but again, just in case chat doesn't know, um, I'm not going to tell you which side to move. I'm trying to warm everybody up here. I want you guys to find the mate in one for either side to move. So yes, again, this is a mate in one. Give it probably another 30 seconds. See if anybody else has any ideas. Okay, uh, we're going to move on. Um, so here is actually um, a mate in one for black. So if it is black to move, uh, there's a mate in one. We're, we're going to look at the kings first. Um, I, I will actually show white to move. Um, the best you can do with white to move is mate in two. Um, and the way that this is accomplished is with uh, pawn takes g8. Or sorry, rather not pawn takes g8. Haha. <laughs> Uh, oh gosh, everything's breaking. The best move here is uh, knight takes g8, and then after knight takes g8, pawn takes, and not turning into a queen, under promoting to a knight. So this is if it were white to move. That is the best you can do. Uh, with black to move, there is only one mate in one. Uh, and it has to do with this knight here on a6. It's going to come down to b4, and you'll notice it's surrounded by a bunch of other knights, no bishops, so it cannot be captured. We'll deliver checkmate to the king. Okay, enough silliness. We're going to get into real puzzles tonight. Uh, again, like I said, tonight's puzzles are going to focus on why um, computers are bad at chess. Um, one of the problems with teaching a tactics class is... Uh, it's hard to prevent people from just plugging in the position to their computer. So the theme for tonight is going to be puzzles computers cannot solve. Puzzles that computers just, if you give them enough time, will never find. 
the correct solution. So we're gonna start off with this first puzzle here, white to move. Um, and it's gonna have to be a white to move and draw. Obviously, um, with black being up so much material, the best white can do is draw, there are no mates. Um, this puzzle here actually comes from a Penrose Institute study where they wanted to compare um, different ways humans uh, solve puzzles. Uh, see who finds the right ideas for some reason why the computers can't find it. Um, so even if we did have the computer evaluation here, uh, I'll give it to you guys right now. Stockfish 12 on depth 59 is saying that this position is minus 19.9. But that's not gonna help you. These are puzzles computers can't solve. <laughs> so we'll give the chat a few minutes to try and come up with any ideas here of how white is supposed to handle this position. What are some of the features here? Uh, what are some of the candidate moves? Do we even need to you know, calculate specific moves or is just a plan good enough? Great Wolf is wondering why you can't just shuffle the white king. Just don't take anything. So that is a good idea. Uh, we'll touch on it again in just a second. Uh, while I'm giving the chat enough time to try and gather their ideas, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why, uh, for this specific problem, the computer is not able to find the right solution. Again, I said on depth 59, uh, the latest version of Stockfish, Stockfish 12, is uh, saying that this position is minus 19.9. And the reason that computers can't solve this is mainly because of these bishops. With just one bishop on the board, the computer will find the correct evaluation almost immediately. Uh, with only two bishops on the board, uh, it's gonna take some extensive calculation, but eventually the computer is going to find the correct solution. But with all three bishops here, there are many, many, many possible candidate moves here. And it's going to take a lot of computer resources to be able to calculate every single one of these bishop moves. So one of the reasons why this specific puzzle cannot be solved correctly is because of the extensive resources it needs for the computer to evaluate all of these possible bishop moves. It's um, like distracting the computer. There's not enough focus of the computer on what actually matters for it to find the right um, solution. So we have Great Wolf and I, Manny, working on this. Anybody else in the chat have any ideas? And I think it should go without saying that um, I believe none of these puzzles come from real games. <laughs> Manny's suggesting the very practical solution of just running the clock out for black. If this were a real game, um, just play whatever moves because the engine's gonna be busy calculating random moves. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're gonna go back to uh, Great Wolf's suggestion. Why can't you just shuffle the white king? And this is a very good question. This is actually um, in the results of the study. They found that while engines can never find the solution, most strong tournament players are able to find the solution instantly. For those who saw it in the chat, Great Wolf almost spit out the suggestion immediately, why don't you just shuffle the king? If you take a look at it, all of white's pawns are on light colored squares, which means that none of these bishops are able to do anything to affect these pawns. Also, black has no legal moves with their pawns thanks to being obstructed by their own pieces and our pawns. Uh, because of these pawns being stuck, the queen and the rooks also have no legal moves, and the king has no legal move to escape because pawns control one square diagonally. With black not being able to do anything to affect our pawns, which are creating this barricade, uh, we can actually just move the king around without much calculation at all. We can actually just make any king moves. Uh, as long as they're on the light squares, we don't need to worry about anything. There's no way for black to break through this barricade. So these pieces are gonna be stuck forever and the, the dark square bishops are gonna be moving around forever. Um, there are a couple things that um, white needs to watch out for while they play. Um, they don't want to be pushing their pieces around. 
For example, if white plays pawn to c7, this is going to be a uh, this is going to be a loss for white uh, almost immediately. Black can just take the pawn. White is going to have to make a move, and now the king can escape. And once the king escapes, uh, they can step out of the way for the queen to come down. So just some examples here of the king moving around. Now the queen escapes, and this is going to be mate in no time for black. But as long as white doesn't push these pawns and makes king moves, they can draw with ease. Uh, and in fact, if uh, the computer just like uh, short circuits, we should say, and moves all of the bishops off of the diagonal, um, then white can actually win this position by pushing the pawn. Of course, this isn't really tricking the computer into giving you a win. This is more of a more of a help mate. Uh, but that is the first first position of the night is uh, this puzzle from a study from the Penrose Institute. To the right a little bit. You want that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm fixing it. Ben is having a heart attack in our uh, studio right now. Uh, <laughs> Okay, um, Ben, are we going to be good to move on? Okay, Ben says it's fine, so we're going to move on to the next puzzle. Um, I believe this next puzzle here is a puzzle from Frederick Friedel in a chess base article where they gave this position to computers and people to try and find the solution to. Again, this is a puzzle that some, uh, some good uh, players can find almost instantly. Um, but computers will never be able to solve it. And yes, Manny, this is a pyramid tactic, close cousin of the pyramid scheme. Um, Philidor is saying lock the game up. Um, very good suggestion. There are many, many ways to try and do this. Many, many of them fail. So I want you to be a little bit more specific in your answer of how are we going to lock this game up. If you'll notice, there are many, 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 many pawn captures to consider. The many, many pawn pushes to consider. There's a couple checks with the bishop to consider. So lots of moves here. And Great Wolf again coming here with the solution. Bishop to a4 check, then check all the way down, then f5 draw. So Great Wolf is just on fire tonight. Um, obviously, great tactician, not using computers because computers can't solve these. Um, just so you guys know the computer evaluation of this position, using Stockfish 12 on depth 24. Stockfish says that this position is minus 9.6 and actually never even comes to the conclusion that the end position is a draw. Um, so here, bishop to a4 check. The only move here is king takes um, a4. Uh, if king to c4, um, oh no, I can't even use the computer to help me. Uh, bishop to b3, after king to b5, then c4 and check all the way down. Um, but the main move is king takes a4, and just like Great Wolf said, you check all the way down. It's very important these are checks as well, because if you ever allow black to capture one of these pawns, uh, white is going to be in serious trouble uh, because they are going to be down two rooks. So we check all the way down. Now here, if black doesn't capture the bishop, we just play f5. And if they capture, we have this very interesting situation where Philidor was talking about how um, we need to lock up the game, and now the pawns block all the entrances into white's half of the board. And with these rooks, there is no way to break through. If a rook ever puts itself on a square like a3, white never uh, should take this rook. It will create a breakthrough position. 
Instead of taking the rook, white is just going to shuffle the king around in a square, ignoring the fact that black is hanging rooks and just move around on their side for 50 moves. And uh, for those of you who don't know, 50 move rule is whenever there are no captures or pawn pushes for 50 moves, the game is a draw. Um, in the scenario where black takes the bishop, again, just f5, um, and there, there's nothing here. Let's say black completely avoids taking the bishop. We still play f5. If they play a rook move, we can take their bishop, they take our bishop, and again, we have two rooks that will never be able to break through this uh, pawn, pawn chain. Um, this kind of idea is something that Hikaru Nakamura used in his battles, I believe, against the computer Komodo. Uh, it may have been against Houdini. I can't remember which engine it was exactly, but this was a long time ago. Um, Nakamura played against the engine and had a double exchange sacrifice um, because the rooks are not able to break through locked up positions like this. So actually having the two minor pieces for the two rooks um, was good enough to win the position. Uh, I Manny is saying that this uh, structure with the pawns is known as the Iron Curtain. Uh, wondering if it's known like that in English. I believe it is. Um, although I'm not 100% uh, sure on the technical term for this kind of setup. Okay, we are just flying through these puzzles. Okay, this next one is um, a puzzle that its origins are a little mysterious. It's a little bit back and forth on where this puzzle comes from. Uh, this puzzle, uh, I guess the most famous one, uh, is that it was shown at, um, I think it was the Arco tournament of 1979, maybe, maybe 1978. Um, but there was a tournament there, or sorry, Avro, not Arco, uh, Avro tournament, where it had like Kasparov, Bent Larson, Tal. Uh, someone showed up, showed them this puzzle in between games. Tal looked at it for 10 minutes, walked away for an hour, and when he came back, the magician had solved the puzzle. Um, this is another puzzle that the computer cannot solve. This one's also very, um, uh, very famous. So if you do know the solution, um, good to you. Um, I want to make sure that other people have enough time to, to try and figure out this puzzle. This one is definitely more complicated than just white to move and draw. This one is actually a white to move and win. And again, I will give you guys the computer evaluation because I know it won't help. Uh, Stockfish 12 on depth 41 says this position is minus two and a half, which means black is uh, better by almost a full minor piece. This one is white to move and win, not white to move and draw. So I'll give the chats, um, you know, 30 seconds to a minute to try and get their thoughts together, try and uh, make it through, and then we will start talking about all the different variations. Manny says that he's seen this one. It's about 10 moves. Uh, yeah, it's about 11 moves, um, 12 moves for, I guess if you take the longest solution, it's like 13 moves, but the, the main idea is 11 moves. We'll give another 15 seconds here. Okay, so we're not going to go through the, the solution just yet. We're going to talk about some of the features in the position and why some may or may not work right away. So the very first candidate move that any player might consider is pawn push and promote to queen. And the reason for this is just to be able to, uh, to get your material back. And if white can get a queen, they should be doing well. They should be able to win this game. Uh, it's going to take a while 
but white should win. Uh, and many, you are correct. The uh, the engine does realize their loss after you know about seven or eight moves. It does take it a while to be able to, to realize it's losing. Um, but back to this first candidate move, pawn to d8, queen. The problem with this move right away is that black has this annoying little check, knight f7, where after the king moves and the knight takes, the king takes. Here you have a position where black is just three pawns up, and it's going to be very, very difficult for white to even draw this. Black should just be winning here. So, unfortunately, pawn to d8 immediately does not work. So, we need to think of other candidate moves. Are there any suggestions from the chat? Does anybody think they have it? I am noticing it's a lot uh, longer for the answers to be coming in tonight. Uh, I guess we don't have our 2,800 viewers. 2,800 level viewers who are solving the tactics instantly. I'm not seeing any suggestions come in, so we'll start going over the solution, starting with the first move. Um, oh, someone is saying go to D8 and promote to a knight. Okay, uh, Philidor says D8 knight. Uh, very nice suggestion, uh, but here, uh, let's see, I think pawn to c4 is uh, one of the recommendations coming with check after king to c6. Um, uh, even without this check, uh, black should have pawn to e2. And if the bishop takes, then um, it looks like pawn to c4 check. This is to make sure the knight isn't taken by the bishop. After king to c6, pawn to c2. Um, this pawn is going to queen. So unfortunately, knight to d8 and promoting to a, uh, sorry, pawn to d8 and promoting to a knight also isn't going to work. Unfortunately, it just seems like black has everything covered. It's almost like this position feels like it's minus two and a half. <laughs> but we know better. Um, the first move here is knight to f6 check. And just like any tactic, uh, or really any move in a chess game, you want to make sure you're considering your, um, your forcing moves in your candidate moves. So the level of forcing moves, you have checks, you have captures, and you have threats to capture. So we should always look at our checks for our first candidate moves. So now that we have this check, it actually forces black's response. The only response to a knight check is to either take the knight or move the king. Nothing can take the knight, so the king has to move. So now we need to decide what is the best square for our king here. So let's start with king to h8 and why king to h8 doesn't work. I'll leave it to the chat to find these little solutions. King to h8, why doesn't it work? We have Jay Holden and Great Wolf and, and Manny all saying promote to queen. And yes, so before this did not work because knight f7 would fork the king and queen. But here with the king on h8, this is actually delivered with check. So no knight f7 after black has to respond to this check. Only move is king g7 and now the queen can move out of the way um, to safety. Uh, there are many like uh, quick mates here. There's like a mate in three after knight h5, but to keep it practical, to keep it simple, so you guys can remember some of these techniques in your own games, um, you know, if you can just save the queen and be up material, uh, you know you have a winning position, that, that is good enough reasoning. Um, no need to try and uh, kill yourself to find the fastest mate if you're looking for a refutation to a move. Um, the next best move is king to g6. And here after king to g6, the computer uh, does realize that it's losing after this move. 
Um, now, uh, we'll go back half a move here on the knight check. The position is minus 6.3. After king to g6, the position is plus 65. So the engine is waking up after this move. How do we refute king to g6? Manny says he won't spoil anything. We might have to rely on Great Wolf again. Maybe Bishop to c2. It's a good thought. Good thought. So Bishop to c2 is a check. Remember, you always want to look at your checks. And Philidor is saying bishop to h5. Um, let's see. So Great Wolf and Philidor kind of have the same idea. You want to check with the bishop. Um, the line that I have in my study is bishop to h5 check. We'll take a look at bishop to c2 in just a second. The idea after a bishop to h5 is that after a king to f6, you can promote to a queen and it comes with check. So no knight f7. If the king goes to, let's say, f5, you can still promote to a queen because now after knight f7, the bishop controls f7. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Cyrus knows this position. It's the one Tau solved after a smoke and a walk. Yes, that is the, the most popular origin story of this puzzle. Um, it is debated and the, the real... Um, coming about of this puzzle was that it was solved, not solved, it was published about five years after that tournament where people were confused. How was it published after people knew it? And what happened was the composer actually um, just showed it around to a couple of his friends who were on the tournament circuit and they thought it was really nice. They passed it around to their competitors when they were at tournaments like the Avro tournament. And uh, yeah, the, the Tal Smoke Break is the probably the most famous origin story of this puzzle. Uh, let's see, back to this position, we'll take a look at bishop c2 and how that wins. If king to f6, again, they just promote with check. So we'll look at um, king to f7. If king to f7, you can promote because what happens is uh, the king blocks the square for the knight. Um, so here we can look at king to g7, making sure we don't block this square. And here it looks like there is a little... I guess this is like a only move for white. Um, with the bishop to h5 line, it was pretty clear because the f7 square was always covered. Here, you can't promote to a queen right away. You have to make sure you play another move first. So I'll give you guys just a couple seconds to find the move here. Great Wolf with Knight H5, Cyrus saying King to E7. So let's start with King to E7. Um, we'll start with King to E7, and unfortunately this doesn't work. Um, mainly because a pawn to C4, and this comes with check, the King has to go to E8, and here the Knight can go to C7 check. King D8, and the King blocks his own pawn, and now here... There are a couple moves, but the most straightforward is pawn to e2, and it's impossible to stop this pawn from queening. So king to e7 doesn't work. You have to be more forceful. So Great Wolf's suggestion of knight h5 uh, is very clever. Uh, the king cannot go to f6. It's controlled by the knight. It cannot go to g6. It's controlled by the bishop. Cannot go to h7, controlled by the bishop. So the king has to go to either the 8th rank or it has to go to f7. When the knight goes, sorry, when the king goes to f7, it blocks the square for the knight so we can promote without fear. And if he goes to the 8th rank, we promote with check, promote without fear. 
So knight h5 is the uh, the move here. Forces the king to a bad square. Let's see. Um, so let's see. After that, uh, that does refute king to g6. So now we have to go back to the main line. Uh, after the very first move, knight f6 check. Uh, black should play king to g7. And here the computer still thinks black is winning. Here on depth 25, Stockfish 12 says the position is minus 5.1. Yes, uh, Manny is correct. Th this was just the beginning. That was just move one. So one of the things that um, can be helpful when you're solving any tactics, or even just in your own games, it doesn't even have to be tactical, it can also rely on positional plans, is if you calculate other lines that don't get played, those ideas still may come into play um, later in the future. So we saw this knight to h5 check idea in the bishop to c2 line. Um, we know that we want to calculate our forcing moves first, and knight h5 is still a check here. So we want to make sure we can calculate uh, that out. It's a very good starting point because it was a theme in our other lines. So it should be it should be easier to calculate. Knight h5 check and king to g6 is practically the only move. Again, if it goes to f7, we can promote without fear because the knight is blocked. And if it goes to the 8th rank, we promote with check. So king to g6 is forced. And we have this new position. King is on g6, white is still trying to promote, knight still controls f7. What do we do? What do we do in this crazy position? And now, even though we've gone further down the solution, the computer thinks it's even better than it was before. A computer is now saying that at depth 27, the position is minus 6.8. Bishop to b3 is a suggestion. So if we go bishop to b3, what are you going to do against c4 check? So this is one of the ideas we had earlier, um, like with the king to e7 line, but the problem was c4 check and the king had to block their own pawn. After bishop to b3, c4 comes with check, the king has to move. Um, it's very difficult to find even a legal move. So let's say king to c6. Um, here we we can't just, uh, I guess black can't just allow white to promote, so they have to stop the promotion. And uh, here looks fine for black. It's going to be difficult for white to stop both, both of these pawns, mainly the e pawn from coming down and promoting. So unfortunately, bishop b3 is not forcing enough. We have someone suggesting knight f4. Let's see. After knight f4, king f5, what's your follow-up? Trying to figure out what, what the plan is here for whites, because as it stands currently, the black knight still controls f7, which will fork the king and queen. Bishop h5 here. If bishop h5, black just has pawn to c2. Sorry, actually not pawn to c2. Um, it looks like... It's really hard to refute lines in a puzzle which computers don't understand. So forgive me if I'm a little slow to find the best move here. 
Um, looks like knight to e4 check. The king has to move. Uh, if he comes to d, yeah, e7, we run into the c4 check again. After the king moves down, knight f6 just picks up the pawn. And then this bishop is not able to stop both of these pawns, uh, mainly the c pawn. So I, I hope that's a good enough refutation for you. With uh, knight to f4, and if you go bishop to h5 again, um, it looks like the knight check or the pawn check are going to help black win and promote this c pawn now. I agree, Philidor. Chess is hard. So I am not a believer in knight to f4, although very good try because we do want to make sure we are calculating our forcing moves first. Bishop c2 check question mark in the chat. Bishop to c2 check. And I will let you know the engine does change its analysis on this move. Bishop to c2 check. We have to look at what black's best move is. Uh, they can't go to g7 or f6 or h7 because they're controlled by uh, black's, you know, uh, sorry, by black's, uh, sorry, white's pieces. If the king goes to f7, we can promote without fear because it blocks the knight's square to fork. And then uh, he's saying, I am homeless on Wi-Fi, saying this puzzle is incorrect due to a secondary solution. I don't believe there is a secondary solution in the main line. Let me double check my study here. Yeah, no, there, there is no second solution in the main line. That was one of the uh, one of the sidelines that we were looking at. <laughs> so um, here the king should take on h5. And now the computer is starting to understand what's going on. Um, it still doesn't understand the entire thing, um, but it, it does say now that the position is plus 3.8. Um, so let's see, let's keep going. Uh, next move here for white, I'm going to let you guys find it. This is a bit of a tougher move to find. I think to be able to find this move and the idea behind it, you're going to have to like solve the rest of the puzzle. Cyprus has the right idea. Black's king is getting trapped and he takes the knight. The progress is suggesting king to e7. Uh, so let's take a look at king to e7 real quick. Um, I believe, well, let's try c4 because this has been like the, the refutation in most of the lines. So pawn to c4. If king to f6, then it looks like there's some weird bishop e7 check, king e7, and pawn to e2 is going to be your refutation. Yes, you can promote, but black is going to promote with check and then be able to trade off queens, and then black is going to be up a knight and two pawns. And uh, just so you know, like the plan here uh, for that knight and two pawns end game, it's not going to be an easy draw. Even though it looks like these pawns are isolated and the bishop stops it, uh, there's no way that white can save this G pawn. Black is just going to pile up with the king and knight and take this pawn for free. And then the bishop is not going to be able to stop the c pawn and the h pawn. So king takes the knight. Philidor is starting to try and plan out what needs to happen in the rest of the game. So if we wanted to mate with just the pieces we have on the board, we want our king to be on f5. And we want our bishop to be on the d1 to h5 diagonal to mate. So very good plan. Now, Philidor, the challenge is how do you make it happen? <laughs> ah. 
how can you make your plan come to life? I have a suggestion, so maybe d8 queen and let the knight take the queen for tempo. So yes, this is a very good idea. Sacrificing your pawn for tempo. So we'll walk through it. Ideally, you would have this all calculated out before you play the moves, but uh, I want to make sure everybody is, uh, you know, everyone's on the same page, uh, making sure that none of us are getting lost trying to visualize within the deep black hole of chess. So the idea is uh, queen and let them take it for tempo. So king to e7, knight d8, and king f5. So we have the first part of the plan done. We have the king on f5. We are ready to put the bishop on d1 for mate. However, black has a move to, um, I guess, postpone this mate. So black plays pawn to e2. That way, bishop to d1 is no longer possible. Black will take and promote to a queen and mate white very shortly. So now, how, how does white weasel their way out of this one? The pawn on e2 is getting ready to promote on a dark square. So it looks like they're just going get, to get away with a free queen. Great wolf and quick uh, 0618 are saying bishop to e4. And this is correct. Um, Cycris is saying king e5, if bishop e2, then bishop e4. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what line that is. I'm having trouble visualizing it. Um, but great wolf and quick are correct. Bishop to e4. And the idea is that if queen, then bishop to f3 is checkmate. So black obviously cannot queen. They need to, they need to stop the checkmate. So how do they do this? How do they stop it? Well, instead of promoting to a queen, they need to under promote to a knight. So the knight stops this check. I'm going to ask you guys where, where does white go now? Yeah, black never gives up. Yeah, all you guys thought it was over. All you guys thought this was going to be checkmate. But uh, truth be told, we're only like halfway through the puzzle. <laughs> There's still more to go. Bishop d5 now, correct. Bishop d5 is the next move. And there's a couple ideas behind this. Um, but the main, the main idea behind bishop to d5 is to pass the bishop around the board. That way it will be able to make it to a different square on this diagonal, or maybe even on the uh, e8 to h5 diagonal to be able to checkmate the king. So here the, the threat is bishop to b7, I believe. Let me make sure that's true. That is not true. The bishop is trying to go to c4 and checkmate on e2. My apologies. Um, so here, pawn to c2. So again, trying to go for promotion. And we will go bishop to c4. The bishop is hitting the knight and threatening going to e2 with mate. And you guys should see black's next move here. Um, black, if they promote to a queen, just gets mated after knight f3 and takes. So they obviously can't promote to a queen, which means the obvious knight under promotion. I know, you guys are loving this puzzle. <laughs> so what does white do from here? It seems like all the squares are being covered by knights.
So yes, black has four knights, a bishop, and two pawns against white's bishop and pawn. And I'm making the ridiculous crazy claim that white is winning here. Drunas is suggesting bishop to b5, go to a4, and then d1. And I like this idea. Um, going to b5 is actually kind of like a fork between mating, um, mating ideas. You have a bishop to e8, which is threatening mate along this diagonal. And you have the idea of going to a4 and d1, where it will be mate along this diagonal. So bishop to b5. So now you need to stop the bishop coming to e8. So again, we will see a knight come to stop the bishop from mating. These knights are just trying to control all the squares that the bishop can go to. And then I guess Drunas included it in their answer. Uh, bishop goes to a4. And here after bishop to a4, uh, I'm going to say the puzzle is solved. And for those of you who don't see it, the reason why this is solved is there's no way to control the d1 square. Black cannot control the d1 square, which means that there's no way to stop the checkmate, that there's no way to check the white king, no way to take the pawn, um, and no way to like control a path. So that way, after the check, the piece that is blocking can be defended. So uh, no matter what black plays, for instance, pawn to c4, then bishop to d1, knight e2, captures, knight f3, captures, is mate. So there is yet again another puzzle that a computer cannot solve. And it looks like we still have some time here. So I will throw in uh, this last puzzle here. Um, let's see. I am homeless is commenting again on the previous puzzle. So let's go there. Um, they said the strongest engines concluded there was no win after four king to g4. So let's see. Uh, strong. So let's see. Back to the fourth move. D8 queen. There is no win after king g4. Uh, so king g4. So we're actually in a position where the computer kind of understands what's happening. The, the computer catches up after bishop c2. Um, but it would be a bit hypocritical for me to use the computer to find the refutation. But now that white has the queen, it, it just looks like it, it should be they have too much, too much material. Um, let's see, why can't they go queen f6? They're hitting the pawn and then threatening queen to f4. If c4 check, probably king to d5. Uh, someone's suggesting e2 after the queen move, but after e2, the queen can go to f4 check. The king has to go to h3, and now queen f2, you're on the pawn. So I think, I think computers have evolved enough to at least solve some of these sidelines. Um, obviously, they have not evolved enough to uh, to calculate the main line. On to the on to the final puzzle. I don't know if how much thinking time we can give, but uh, this is a puzzle from uh, Surya Ganguly in I want to say twenty seventeen. Gave it on their Twitter. And uh, they, they said, uh, you know, try and solve this position and you're allowed to use an engine. Um, the engine does give this a winning evaluation for white, uh, but I don't believe that the, uh, the computer actually finds the correct solution. So I'll give you guys a little bit of time to try and figure out this position. Definitely more difficult than any of the others. Definitely gonna have our longest solution. The solution for this one is 31 moves long. <laughs> I have faith in you guys. Yes, Drunas, this is a where do we sack the knight puzzle.
King D2 for distant opposition. <laughs> I like it. Unfortunately, that's not going to be our, our solution here. Um, so first, let's, uh, yeah, let's take a look at um, where, where knights should go and where any possible sacrifices can happen. The, the main problem in this position is it's almost like one of those um, dead chess positions. So I believe if you like look up the definition on Wikipedia is probably a good one. Um, is where the pawns are touching each other in such a way that the only moves that each side can make is like shuffling their king on their own side and there's no way to make progress even though there's still mating material on the board. So uh, here with the pawns locked up like this, neither king can go to the other side of the board. So uh, we need to make sure that whatever move we make is going to be maneuvering the knight or finding a knight's sacrifice that works. Um, and just for an example, if we try and sacrifice the knight right away, uh, this is an immediate draw. There is no way for the white king to, to pass this black pawn. And the same situation all down the board. No way to pass through. So sacking the knight onto b4 is not going to work. What other recommendations are coming through the chat? Um, we're getting a recommendation to sacrifice on g5. Um, very tempting, but again, even if we can get our knight to h3 and sack on g5, the pawn takes, and then once the black king runs to the corner, it's just going to be a draw. There's no way for white's king to break through on either side, and as soon as black captures the h pawn, because it's extended itself, um, it, it's just a draw. Great Wolf has a suggestion. Uh, first plan thinks they need to get the knight to a4, which means b2. So the way we solve this position is actually in a few stages. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple different ideas and then actually walk through those stages here. So first, um, kind of like a visualization or I guess planning type of strategy is to imagine if that knight were not on the board. Just imagine you took that knight, picked it right up and took it off. And then let's say you were playing bug house or crazy house and you had a knight in the pocket. Where would you drop that knight on the board? And here, the knight would make a lot of sense on f5. This knight is going to attack the h6 pawn, which is the base of the pawn chain on the king side. And the only square that the black king can control, um, or I guess help protect h6 uh, with the knight on f5 is on h7. The knight will control the g7 square, which means if we get the knight on f5 and the king is on h7, we can make a king move in Zugzwang black. Black will have to step to the eighth rank and then the knight can take on h6 and then the knight will just maneuver back around and then the g5 pawn will fall eventually. Um, so that is going to be our winning plan. Uh, so now we need to think of ways to get to, get to f5. Um, let's see, if we try from the uh, white side, you have g3 and h4. g3 just doesn't work. The, the f pawn will take. And then once you recapture, there's no way to break through. Pushing the f pawn won't help. But if the knight is on h4, then uh, let's say pawn takes. And if king takes, you can push through with the pawns. After takes, king takes. This rook pawn is going to be passed and will promote. So now the problem is, how do we get this knight on h8, uh, sorry, h4? Is it even possible? So to, to get to h4 from the king side, um, or white side, you need to come from g2. And to come to g2, you need to come from e1. And to come to e1, you need to come from c2. And to get to c2, you need to come from a1. And there's no way to get to a1. So unfortunately, that just isn't possible. We have to go through with Great Wolf's plan of maneuvering the knight to a4 and seeing if we can come around on black's side of the position to come to f5. So, very first move, king to b2. We want to clear a path for our knight, where the knight can go to c1, e2, g1, h3, and then adjust itself by coming back on f2, d1, b2, and a4. So that is stage one. Black's king is just going to make shuffling moves because they have no counterplay. So I feel like these moves shouldn't need too much explanation. 
And in 10 moves, we can get the knight to a4. Once we get the knight to a4, black has to make a move. Uh, they can't go to b7 because we just take on c5, which means their only move is uh, king to d6. And now, where should our where should our knight go from here? Someone's asking, why not king d2 instead of king b2? Um, so there's a couple ideas uh, later in the position which will make sense why the king is over on the queen side. You could go to d2, um, but later you would have to just move the king over to the queen side anyway. So I'll explain, uh, I'll explain why the king is on the queen side in just a second. Where is our knight going? Knight to b6. So knight to b6 is a good move. And we need to see where it's going from here. Uh, and it's going to d5. And from d5, it actually has a way just to get to f5, just in two moves. Or coming to g8, and then picking off the pawn that way. So to stop those ideas, the black king needs to oscillate between e7 and f6. So the king is going to be on e6 and f7, controlling these two squares um, that help white's plan in the long run. So king to e6, knight to d5, and now king to f7. Again, just stopping the knight from making any progress towards the king side. So if... If black is just going to shuffle their king there, we need to find a bit more of an active plan for white to, to break through. So unfortunately here, knight to c3 is not the solution, although we would all love to see it be so. So I want to uh, just kind of remind you guys of the idea in the beginning of the position. If the knight was on h4 and the king was on h3, then that position, if black took, would be winning. White would take back, create an outside passer, and then promote. And if black's king tried to stop the, the passer, then white's king can go across the other side of the board and promote. Or sorry, not promote, just capture all of black's pawns and then push another pawn to promote. So that idea does exist on the king side, but this idea also exists on the queen side. And this is why it's important the king is on a2 instead of d2. Um, so Manny's trying to suggest another knight reroute. So uh, let's just go over that first. Knight b6, he wants the knight to go to c8 and then e7 and then f5 or to d6 and f5. But the problem is after king to... Um, e7 here, no matter where the knight goes, um, the king will be able to control the proper square. So like if the knight comes back to d5, just go to e6. If it goes to c8, then the king can go to d7. So unfortunately, um, knight b6 with the idea of a different route to f5 isn't going to work. In fact, knight to b6 just isn't going to work at all because b6 is the square we came from. If we go back to b6, we're going to end up repeating eventually. Um, well, well, okay, I guess I just accidentally showed it. Um, but the move here is knight to c7 with the idea of sacrificing the knight on a3. So the same idea that was on the king side exists on the queen side. The king comes back over, knight b5, king to, to d7, and knight a3. And now if black takes, king takes is going to be a simple win because of king c6, pawn b4, take, take, push, and then close opposition is going to force the king away. King comes to d5, and it's impossible to save e5. So if black takes, it is a winning king and pawn endgame for white. Black can't take. So they just shuffle the king. And now I ask, how, how does white proceed from here? 
If we go back to B4, it's just going to repeat what we've already been through, right? We've already found out the knight can't travel on the black side of the board to get to F5. So going back to B4 is going to be rather pointless. And Manny has it. If you don't capture the knight on H3, then the knight actually just gets to go to H4. And from the very beginning, we said that if the knight is on H4, it's going to win because there's Zugzwang. Here in this position, there is no Zugzwang because this B pawn is not against the edge of the board. So the knight makes its journey to h4. And again, I feel like this is, this is self-explanatory um, for these moves. No, black can't do anything. There's no counterplay. Um, so all white needs to do is maneuver their pieces to the king side to be prepared for this sacrifice. And now that both sides have made it to the king side, knight h4 is playable. And now here, uh, black can't stop knight to f5, which we've already discussed as a win. For example, king f6, knight f5, the king cannot protect the h6 pawn. Sad story. It's going to fall, the knight's going to come back, and then this uh, pawn can try and break through. The knight can maneuver around on the other side again, try and capture on c5 or e5. And again, if they take, then king takes, king moves over, and now white creates this passer. They sack a pawn temporarily to be able to get this sort of um, position here where black is in Zugzwang. They can no longer protect their pawn, so they have to move away. White captures, and now after king h7, stopping this pawn from moving forward, king to f5, e5 is falling, shortly followed by c5 falling, and then white is going to push all of their pawns here. And unfortunately, this plan for, for black with the knight coming to uh, f5, that one is unstoppable, so the best move for them here is to take the knight. There is no way around it. And this is a positional plan that, even though the computer gives a winning evaluation for white, will not find the proper plan. So there you have it. There's all our puzzles for tonight. You guys are now smarter than a computer. I'm expecting everyone to go out and beat Stockfish with crazy tactics. If you do, send the games in. We might get Caleb to go over them for game review. But I want to thank everybody for coming in for the tactics time. I want to thank Manny and Great Wolf especially. They stuck around for the openings explained lector on YouTube as well. I want to wish everyone a good night, and we will see you next time. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club.